So what does all that have to do with an environmental problem? You're about to find out. I'm gonna show you. I'm standing on the shores of beautiful Lake Champlain, Vermont. It looks pretty idyllic, right? But it, it's not always perfect. Sometimes the water looks like this. This nasty and downright dangerous water is the result of cyanobacterial blooms, also called blue-green algae, that tend to show up when there's excess nutrient in the water. These cyanobacteria can actually release neurotoxins that are dangerous to human and animal health. This water quality problem, harmful algal blooms, is not specific to Vermont. This occurs in a lot of places around the world. A well-known example in the United States is Lake Erie. Here locally, the phosphorus in the landscape, it originates as manure that's been applied to fields. So the dairy farmers have excess manure from the cows, so they need to get rid of it, and they use it as fertilizer on fields. That phosphorus that's been applied to those fields, it tends to bind itself to little silt and clay particles, the tiny little particles that are most easily mobilized when rain hits the ground and flows over land, so it'll pick these phosphorus-laden sediment bits up and wash them down the streams and down the rivers and, and into the lakes they go. So they can enter the lakes, and when the water gets still, then it tends to settle out, and it'll settle out and form layers on the lake bottom. So this then gives a layer of nutrient at the lake bottom that um, just keeps piling up over the years, and it makes it so that there's a big store of, of phosphorus in the lake sediment. As part of a larger research group, I've been studying this problem for a number of years. One question we explored was what may happen if we threw what we call a magic switch, meaning that all of the nutrient inflows would be magically cut off. Would the lake revert to natural, clean state right away? We knew that the problem was likely to drag on for many more years because all of the legacy phosphorus or remaining phosphorus still bound to the lake bottom sediment that exists from decades of phosphorus loading. We explored the magic switch question using computer models, but all forward-looking computer models are very difficult to validate. Even so, our models said it would take about two centuries for Lake Champlain to revert to a clean natural state if we were to cut off all nutrient. But there is a fascinating study that provides some guidance on this question. This study looks at ancient lake eutrophication from past intensive human agricultural impact using evidence from lake sediment cores, and it gives some tantalizing clues about the fate of our lakes in the modern era. Let me take you to Lake Murten, Switzerland. Not far from the lakeshore is the village of Avanche, which is a pretty little town barely in the French-speaking part of Switzerland. What makes this place of great interest is the Roman town of Aventicum, an outpost in the newly conquered territory of Helveti in the first century AD. Aventicum's construction required timber from the surrounding forests, and agricultural practice on the newly denuded landscape allowed nutrients to flow into nearby Lake Murton, resulting in a period of eutrophication and excessive nutrification, similar to the problems of modern-day lakes. Let's explore some of the Roman sites in the town. Aventicum was a thriving Roman town until it was sacked by the Alemanni, an old Germanic tribe, around the year 280. Soon after, the place fell into ruins and the surrounding area was all but abandoned. Not surprisingly, the nutrient loading to Lake Murten dramatically dropped to near zero.
So with such a low population in what was once a venticum, we can expect that the nutrient loading in this area drops to near zero. So this is important because it kind of simulates this magic switch that we were talking about for Lake Champlain here. Here it's obviously impossible to do. We're not going to just abandon the landscape. But it would be nice to know, right? If we were to cut off all phosphorus loading, how long would it take? Well, the answer from this paper, because we had this period of very low population, it was essentially several centuries of, of near abandonment, was 300 years. That's approximately how long it took for Lake Murton to revert back to its natural state. So this is not inconsistent with the models that we had made for Lake Champlain that said that if we were to throw that magic switch, which again is not feasible, then it would take on the order of centuries. So that's the interesting story of Lake Murton and what it can tell us about water quality issues here in our modern era lakes. So what does it all mean for policy for aiming to improve water quality here? Well, I don't think it's good news. I think it would be a really tough sell to ask in a democratic society like here to ask voters to approve some sort of environmental protection measures that would be costly to a lot of people that would give benefits only 300 years from now, as opposed to like five to 10 years. That might be a more politically viable time frame, but three centuries, I don't know. That seems like a tough sell to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but we'll, I don't know. Um, so there are a lot of, of best management practices that can be implemented now, such as, for example, putting in place buffer strips between some of these fields that, that generate the sediment-bound phosphorus and the rivers. So that the idea being that they would intercept the flowing sediment and slow it down and kind of mitigate this, this issue. So that, that's all great, but it's a far cry from this magic switch, which, you know, if, if we take that as the limit, the most extreme limit, and if that still gives us 300 year time frame to, to revert back to a natural state, then, you know, you can draw your own conclusions about the efficacy of some of these other best management practices. So I, I think we are faced with a continued vexing problem that is at its core just um, the result of too much intensive agriculture and activity in the landscape. So anyway, I hope you found this quick trip to Lake Murten in Switzerland from here on the shores of Lake Champlain in Vermont interesting and I'll be posting similar material in the coming months so if you got something out of it or you enjoyed it or you found it interesting please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.